Hey, this is Drew Baird from Moon Audio, and welcome back. Here we are today to answer your Tech Tuesday question about clocking. So all digital components use clocking to keep digital files aligned along the time axis. This is just not limited to the DAC chip if one is used, but also the other digital signal components that have to be kept in line with the digital to analog process, such as the digital power supplies, control chips, and various other pieces of the digital puzzle. All digital components must have a clock to understand when it's time to do something with the audio samples as it receives the input. Think of it as a drill sergeant in the army. It keeps the men in line. The timing of this process is crucial to ensuring the audio we hear provides an accurate representation. If audio samples aren't converted by the DAC at exactly the right moment, then we hear an artificial uh, distorted version of the musical tone. If the timing fluctuates during the digital to analog process, it is much more difficult to render an analog audio waveform that is identical to the original recording. This is even more critical with DSD audio signals over PCM as they function at megahertz speeds in the time axis. Having as accurate a clock signal is very important for the recreation of the digital audio signals, particularly high resolu resolution music that has an ultra high sampling rate such as DSD 22.5 megahertz or PCM at 768 kilohertz. The DAC must convert the signal at an exact moment in time along with its other partners in the signal path. Let's say we have a standalone CD transport and a standalone DAC. And each of these devices have all sorts of components that need to line up with the digital data stream. Now, all the off-the-shelf DAC chips have their own ability to do some clocking, and a crystal clocks are implemented a lot of the time, but this only controls what is happening in that device. But when multiple devices, like we have here, are in the digital chain, you need more. For example, you need to be able to control both the CD transport and all of its components, like the DAC, so that the critical components you really need an accurate and reliable reference source to help control the jitter. Jitter is an effect caused by irregularities or deviations in the system's timing. Jitter is a digital noise. Now it does not sound as drastic as say pink or white noise, etc. in the background when you're listening to music, but what it does is it smears the tonality of the music ever so slightly. The result might be res you know, less resolving and clear sound, sort of like looking through dirty eyeglasses you can still see, but not as clearly. So digital clocks have very sensitive circuitry. And like anything else in audio equipment realm, if you isolate the functions of the process into its own device, you can do a much better job of isolating that one function. Here is an easy way to explain this in the, in the uh, analog domain. Let's say you have an audio receiver. At one time, the audio receiver did it all. It had a tuner for a radio. It had a preamp for volume control and switching, etc. It had photo, equal, photo equalization circuitry and an amplifier to drive your speakers. Well, if you isolate each one of these pieces into its own supply chassis and its own power uh, supply and filtering and so on, each of these pieces can do so much better on its own and sound better than if it is all combined into one circuit. Now, that's not to say you can't build a good all-in-one, but it is more complicated. If we can separate out the clock and have it control each digital device's timing, the lens in those eyeglasses become very clear and sharp. A clock circuit is also very sensitive to interference and especially temperature. Temperature in a multi-circuit device like a CD player is not easy to control. There are just too many circuits in the process going on. With the TIAC CG10M that I have here, for example, TIAC calls, calls their uh, enclosure for this an oven. Now, this is not an oven in the conventional sense, but what it does is control the temperature of the circuit around the crystal clock. It, it maintains it at a constant temperature, and with any brand of external clock, it is very important to let it warm up and stabilize that temperature to avoid deviation in timing. On the TIAC, you have a meter on the front that will normalize um, at, at the optimal temper temperature operating range. Sorry. Now, the TIAC has the ability to control up to four devices at once. So you can control a DAC, which I have here, a CD transport like this one here, and maybe a music server. They can all become slaves to the main clock. Some examples of products we sell that can utilize external clocks are MyTech, DCS, TIAC, and the Orinder servers, just to name a few. 
And we have several cable offerings for clocking cables. The best one is the Silver Dragon digital cable. Does not having an external clock mean you can't enjoy your music? No, of course not. But when you are trying to squeeze out every last drop of performance, then adding one is the next logical upgrade point in your system. So hopefully I've explained a little bit of clocking without getting too crazy and technical. Uh, stay tuned for more information next week on our Tech Tuesday. Make sure to subscribe and leave any questions below and we will get back to you shortly.